Welcome to Behind the Video. My name is Marisha and we're sitting down with filmmaker Nate Lyles to talk about his fan fiction films. Okay, I have to say fan fiction films because you make right. all kinds of fan fiction stuff. Yeah, yeah. So what is your like niche? Um, exactly. Yeah, like comic book related, um, comic book related sci-fi. Um, I'd say more sci-fi mm -hmm. when I was younger. Uh, there were two of, my, two of my favorite cartoons that I came out was Batman Beyond, and I did a live action Batman Beyond. Yeah. And uh, around the same year, uh, Static Shock came out, and it would come on like back to back. Yes. That's one of the other series, and um, you know he was a. A black kid starring in this thing, uh, comic show, yeah, uh, cartoon that you know I don't, I didn't see that that much back in the day. And I was like, okay, so I could relate on that level. And the cartoon itself spoke about uh, like gun violence in school mm. and like bullying and things like that. So you know, and I'm in, uh, you know, in school, you know, I was bullied a little bit. Um, relate to the issues they're talking about. You know, I lived in um, uh, not the best of neighborhoods, so mm. you know, I had dealings with uh, certain violence and and. Uh, Situations, so I got really to the cartoon. I wanted to do Static Shock also for other, for because of the feeling that I got when I watched the cartoon. Mm. Kids growing up now, I mean, it's, it's getting more diverse, they're getting Very better. True, yeah. So, you know, I want to put my little droplet of input in making, you know, making more things, uh, uh, or giving, shining light on kids that want to be a hero or see their face as a hero right. or, you know, have that representation right. out there like that. So it's like, here's my little bit of what I can do to, you yeah. know, to bring that. Cause maybe mainstream ain't moving fast enough. <laughs> okay, what got you into filmmaking? Was was you know fan fiction kind of the first thing that got you into filmmaking, or was there something before? Well, it started. Um, well, my love of movies started when I was young. First movie I saw was um, Back to the Future Two. Yes. I was maybe five years old. My dad took me to the movies to yes. see that. Yes. And then um, in high school, my escape was comic books, mm -hmm. and um, I loved art. Cause I could always like always draw since kindergarten, and so I was like fascinated with art, and I delved into that. I got into music before I got into film. Um, I didn't know that. <laughs> Wait, what? That's 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 the. Uh, Wait. One. <laughs> you got into music. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. Wait, hold on. Let's just take a pause. Was, what do you mean you got into music? <laughs> what were you doing in the music? I was, I was rapping. World. Me and me and uh, two friends of mine at a group named Exiles. Oh my gosh, I'm so. gonna look that up. I'm so excited. When we started out. We needed music videos because that's how you know music yep. videos is part of marketing and music, and then a lot of performances. Yeah. And so um, my mom had got me my first video camera, and I used to just come on, tight. mom. <laughs> Look at, good job, mom. Props to mom. Props to mom. <laughs> and I used to just take my buddies uh, like at the basketball courts and stuff like that, and then we put, or we put together a little like funny skits, sketches mm. and stuff like that. You know, inspired by In Living Color. I'm old. So, you know, Living Color was my, uh, that's my Saturday Night Live. So we did like little sketches with the camera and mm -hmm. I used to take like, oh, I'm really old, two VCRs. If anyone knows what a VCR is, I used to take two VCRs and put them on top of each other and because I didn't have a computer to edit and so wow. I would edit like by recording certain things and stopping, you know, I used to do that. Wow. I was like, I was like, we gonna make it happen. I used to, I was, from the beginning I was, I was, I was on, on a budget, yeah, on pension, you know, <laughs> pension pennies on the budget, making it happen. Yeah. What did you learn from this process that you didn't learn from your other projects? Um, actually, really learned, or I'm learning right now as well, is, is um, how to do my own visual effects. <laughs> because I'm so proud of you. It's that from is... a lack of having just like the music video thing. Right. So like um, in this project, we uh, you know I try to fund, get it funded, or try to raise money to have a visual effects artist work on it. And it's always in my mind that once I start something, I'm going to finish it. I don't care how long it takes. It'll take five years to finish static, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not going to. But um, so I could like I tried to raise the money to, to hire a video effects artist. That didn't pan out. And then um, I just looked online. I was like, you know, I've taught myself many things from just you know YouTube videos and things like right. that. So I just start. I downloaded a free. Uh, video effects software, then I just looked at some YouTube videos and I have two monitors just put the learning oh, hair, wow. the acting hair, and I'm just looking at them and just, just mimicking what they're doing, that taking little notes crazy. and things like that. And then now, now it's getting smoother and smoother, so that's one thing I've learned. <laughs> the artist in me knows the patience of, you know, taking time to yeah. um, strokes and, you know, things like that. It could take like 30 days to do a painting or something like yeah. that. So 
that's the mindset I have when I'm working on these visual effects. And it's like I'm zooming in, and this like one frame by frame, you got to do certain mm-hmm. things. And I'm like, I'm cool. Mm-hmm. But I know damn right, like it take a whole day just to make somebody go like that with like a fireball or something. Right. Like, <laughs> and I think that's like artistry in general is right, well, yeah. taking the time, like you said, taking mm-hmm. the time to really put in the work yeah. for that the result to be great. Is there something that you learned about yourself? Myself. Yeah. Um, I thought of um, how I want to do more projects that reflect me mm. and the stories that I've been through in my life that others may be able to relate to. <clears throat> because like doing static, who is a you know, young black kid, I was a young black kid at once. <laughs> at one point, I at was. At one point, you believe were, it or not, you were black. At <laughs> and doing that, and like you know, when I'm watching uh, the guy Will. Uh, Will Bradford. William J. Bradford mm-hmm. that plays Static. As I'm, wa- you know, I'm watching him in certain scenes, and then like, and I, had, you know, a white friend when I was <laughs> very young, I was kind of watching him and uh, Joe perform. Joe uh, plays Richie, and like they're interacting, and I'm just like behind the camera, like that was me at one point, you know, yeah. and like, and so it, I guess I learned it myself that I want to do more projects like that. I can't really relate to Batman, mm. but I know, you know, I was entertained by Batman and I want to entertain people too. So that's, that's one thing, but I do want to do more, uh, stories that are like, you know, more personal stories mm. and get them out there. Did you just jump into <clears throat> fan f- fiction or have you branched out to doing your original content and then fan fiction? What is that trajectory? How did that kind of come about, I guess? When, um, when I decided to come to Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. Uh, I already knew that I was going to bring Batman first. I'm going to go challenge the best. I want to bring the best, what I feel is going to be my best, and, which is Batman, and do the best I can, and then grow from there. Right. To do the toughest I can, see if I can I can take that, and then take the hits as they come. Okay, so I like this part. All right, I'm going to come up with a theme song for this. Okay. Okay. You grabbed that one first. It's all difficult. You just had all these words on it. You just grabbed it. <laughs> That's not true. Okay, so for you, now we know that this is fan fiction, mm-hmm. but what was the backstory in how you wrote this fan fiction film? In Static? Mm-hmm. Um, I was excited to do Static. All right, I know that. And then when I was thinking of, I thought about like different locations that I could use to like just be spacious and like, you know, I, I took the uh, public transportation here and there, and obviously, you know, like, things I've seen in my city, back mm-hmm. home, like in Philly. Just the people in the city, the lights. So I was just like, the scenery is like popping in my head first, thinking about the people that I wanted to be in it. Mm. And because I already knew like certain cast members I wanted to be in it, so I was thinking, what are their abilities? What can they do? And how can we showcase that? So when you're working on a tight budget, you can't pay certain people. So it's like you want to make a great project that they can be proud of, that they can showcase, and that can help build them up as well. Right. So what I, like the ideas will come. Like I have a just a solid idea. Like I, we got static. Now which of, I went through like 20 different villains, read their bios, and, and then like I, I selected the bad guys. Like right, so this is the bad guy, or these are the bad guys. So what would they be doing? What's their mischievous deed right. that could possibly be good or bad? You know what I mean? Like that can be conflicting for Static. Once I have it outlined in my head, I jot down the outline on the computer. And once it's on the computer, then I just start like filling in the blanks. Mm-hmm. But I don't sit down until I have the story like fully in my head. If it is my original idea, I'll start with like new characters that are mine. Mm-hmm. I have like their name and then I have like everything in bio. I have to write the bio about yeah. them, you know what I mean? Before I can put them on the page or put them in the world and everything. Mm-hmm. But Static already has a bio. Right. The villains already have their bios. So it's like, all right, I got to feel who these people are. And I wanted it to be dope. I wanted it to be entertaining. Exactly. For the, you know, because it's going to be going to people, my, my peers and, you know, people mm-hmm. that I want to relate to the things that I've related to. Exactly. So it got to be exciting too. Yes. And entertaining. Um, what is something that you were like, oh, why I should have changed this on this project to make it more exciting and entertaining. Is there anything, any scenes, any back, anything that you would have been like, if I had a chance to go back and well, change yeah, that? The, the, <laughs> because now that I'm learning video effects and teaching myself, it's like I, I'm kind of in the driver's seat in that mm. I think I would have made a certain fight scene like um, bigger. That's all. And, uh, like, that's everything. I probably would have did his reveal a little different and the uh, fight scene probably would have been shot maybe different. Mm. So now that I see what I can do with the video effects, right. but I know who the video effects are going to go to, so I'm trying to 
kind of keep it simplified for them mm. because of my budget. So. <laughs> Hey, but. budget friendly. So for you, is there anybody that you specifically on this project that you would have loved to work with on this project? I mean, I already worked on this project with you, so I understand like I could yeah. be oh, that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm but who, <laughs> who would you have wanted to like, if I would have locked them in, it would have been gold. Whether you know them, whether it's famous, anybody, you can well, choose anybody. I mean, yeah. Well, yeah, I think I told you this at the uh, at the table where I really wanted um, the makeup artist from Batman Beyond. Like, uh, it would have been nice to have her on set, uh, Kat Tanchenko, mm -hmm. aka Odd Face. <laughs> yes. She knows the name. Y'all know the name. But uh, yeah, it would have been great to have her. Like, we did Batman Beyond was a big project, so yeah. like, you know, we learned a lot about each other and think we flowed well. Um, but the makeup artist that was that we got for aesthetic, Becca, she is amazing. She uh, it's great to work with, very easy to work with, handles direction, she even throws her own twist, she makes sure everything's 100% before, like, 100% with me and everything is checked out before we move on. Yeah. And, uh, well, the, another big thing of her being on set, as well as, like, the cast, this is the first time that uh, a lot of the cast and crew were comic book fans. Ah, and she's a comic book fan. Wow. And, like, um, Joe and, like, Chris and, like, just these comic book aficionados on, on set. I was is loving that it. Is that an official like, title? I, I feel like it needs to be an <laughs> official title. That is though. Chris Sala's official title. <laughs> Chris Sala, come to my set as the comic book aficionado. You got a question? You have your, you have your little book ready? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let me tell you. <laughs> we did. So that, I, I love that so much being amongst like that group of people that mm. love the art and love the source material, you right. know, and familiar with it. So, but yeah, so Becca was great, but, um, yeah, I'm saying, yeah, I missed, I missed Kat on this one. <laughs> what were the different locations that you filmed for Static Shock? Oh, Eddie, oh, and go. Well, the main place was a house in um, Glendale that one of the cast members, Julie, let us use, which was great, because she was using her house for free. And then, <laughs> That was the only one you needed to name. Is that it? That the Marisha was in, that's where she, Marisha shot her scene. That, that was too, 10 so seconds. Great. It was 10 seconds? Yeah, that was 10 seconds. But you I shot in multiple uh, other places. I don't, I don't remember Okay, so we shot places. in that one place that that it was, it was the place with the spiral staircase. <laughs> we that? shot there. You shot yeah. at a basketball court. How do I know that? That was a basketball court, yeah. I know that. And, then, and on a bridge, there's a bridge. It was a bridge. That's awesome. But Julie's house had like five different locations. That is very true. I do remember the that. The bathroom, the bedroom, the back room. I do remember that. I was so We changed, to... we turned uh, Julie, uh, Julie on a Probotoctus, we turned her bedroom into a cell of sorts where um, Mirage, Marisha's character, was being tortured by a surprise villain. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, she, she, she gutted her bedroom and wow. then taped things to the ceiling and everything. So. Much appreciated. Well, thank you so much, Nate, for coming and sitting down and talking with thank you. me. Yeah, fun. I appreciate it. Um, Got scary with that bowl. <laughs> uh, so you can find all of the links to Nate's social media, his uh, previous projects, any of those projects. You can find them down below in the caption. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, so you can see a video of behind the video every other week right here at Risha D Films. Bye. There's a black box that we shot in. Just a black box? You a just took box. a black box and you... It was a black sound space <laughs> studio place that we shot in. Just... All right, so... <laughs> yes! Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm. From the mm. top of my throne, I'm mm. unlocking my mm. zone. Top it's a throne, tossed mm. in the air. Mm. If only y'all can mm. compare my nail to mm. my prior, y'all would not be prepared. Mm. How many here mm. can actually mm. copy the mm. mirror? Presence of my mm. essence, it's a lesson mm. testing your mm. ears. Heavenly tears mm. falling from mm. the eyes of an angel. How many tangled mm. webs that we mm. weave? Let mm. me breathe a scripture from mm. the Mr. Who mm. can tricks up his sleeves. This is the mm. beginning of the end of those hymns. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> She, oh, she wanted to come. Oh, no. <laughs> that was awesome, Nate. Thank you. Music, Thank you. <laughs> music dropping in 2019. Yes, and she's going to sing on it, right? You say, you do okay, great. Bye. <laughs>